Tulips are getting a bit droopy, but they still look pretty. Actually, they've done really well. And um, we still have lots of Easter eggs. <laughs> um, and these are, um, oh, I found those upstairs. They are little seed, seed balls, I think. These might have even been from last year. So um, I was going to just go and put those out in the garden. Um, so wildflowers. I think they were from Aldi or Lidl or something like that. Bee Meadow. I'll just put them down in the garden and see if they come up. But um, Rob and I did manage to get to Car Boot Sale at the weekend. So I thought I would just show you some of the bits I found. Um, I found this really chintzy, lovely um, vintage like oil painting. See that? It um, and the sweetest um, lady was selling it. Um, she said it had been painted by her grandmother who had worked at the Royal Dalton factory in Lambeth. So um, it was really sad that she was selling them. I mean, I think she was just you know clearing out, making space, but um, and this piece she had done also, and it's really. Um, she's got the like family history written on the back. <laughs> it's so sweet. So I couldn't buy one without the other. Um, I'm not really sure. It's like on a um, it's almost like a pottery form. It's quite cute. Um, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find somewhere for upstairs. But I really loved this. Um, this one. I don't know. There's just something about that. It's very. Colourful. I think it's the colours in those sorts of prints that I'm drawn to. Anyway, I think they always look really nice in the bedroom. So, and she wanted like two pounds each of those. Um, and then the other thing I thought I'd show you was this bag of ephemera that I found in a charity shop. And again, it was two pounds. And I wouldn't normally buy things like this because it, I am aware it's kind of, I suppose, collecting junk. But um, Lulu 
is Stout Hair GCSEs in September and she has picked art and um, I just think that these um, little bits of like ephemera are really good for um, for that sort of thing like um, but it's full of vintage cards that have never been used. Look at that, doesn't that look dreamy? Um, there's bits of raffia in that, I mean that's something she probably wouldn't use, but <laughs> had several of these Valentine cards in. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and then it had, um, it's mostly cards. I, I guess it must be old stock, but then it had lovely things like, I mean, when I say lovely, I, I think I mean things that I know will be useful for her, like in her um, art journals and things like that. Um, like cards, the envelopes, um, all sorts of things, like even these little mini, you know, playing cards. Some little um, frames, fabric scraps, <laughs> um, again, and some like vintage wallpapers. I don't know that she would use that. She might. I guess it depends what she's going to do. But um, this is what I really liked: is the old papers, which I think would be really useful. And that's obviously from an old dictionary. It's got all the little tabs in that. So they'll be useful. And then um, it looks like they've, I guess they've had some like damaged treasure, um, treasure, some damaged children's books in. And they've, what they've done is they've just ripped, ripped them up. I guess they were beyond saving. But some of the pictures, look at that. gosh, um, I just thought they might be quite useful for her, I don't know. Um, oh, look at that. Glee's bubbles, but look at those. They're great, aren't they? Oh, I love that. Um, it's kind of sad that the books have not made it, but then it looks like it was a children's book, so they're always going to be well-loved, aren't they? The Silver Merman. Wow, he's great. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that was... I mean, I, it was £2, and... Um, oh, some of the pages are so pretty. So that might be useful, I'm not sure. I don't know that she'd get my shoes off this. But you never know. And they're just some really odd things. Printed in Great Britain. And then there are a couple of these as well. May joy be yours this day. And again, they've not been written in. Any happy returns of the day. Um, I might save those because there's a couple of those and I do know a few people that love, really appreciate vintage um, pieces. So actually I might save those for like birthday, birthday cards. They're just quite cute, aren't they? Um, more. It's a little second birthday one. And again, I don't think he, that she would use these. But Oh, I love this as well. Today is your seventh birthday. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, it's kind of sad that it's never been used. I'll, um, I might hold on to that one myself, actually, and see, see if I can pass that on to someone. And there was also in it, oddly, a Royal Court Theatre um, programme for Look Back in Anger by John Osborne, which is um, a play that I'm pretty sure I studied when I was at college. That's um, the first performance, Tuesday, May the 8th, 1956. <laughs> so 
that's quite interesting. I love all the um, like the advertising on there. It's brilliant. aren't they? Yes, yeah, so that was quite interesting, quite interesting flip through and um, some bits of ribbon and things like that. So I'm going to, I might take a few of the um, the vintage cards and save because I'll, I think I'll be able to use those um, but the rest I'm just going to leave in um, the art box and then she can dig through it whenever she's she's working on something but yeah I, I like the thought that some of these things that might have just gone in the bin will be um, reused. Of course, I do not want to be hoarding loads of it. So I think, um, you know, it's nice to have like one little bundle. We'll leave it. I'll see if she uses it. Um, and then if not, it will get recycled. But yeah, it's a bit of fun. Um, I've also just found a whole little bag of these wooden handmade badges in there as well. They might be quite useful. Let's see, aren't they? So um, we're off on our Easter holidays in that we are home. We've got no plans for the week. I've got a week of work. So, um, but the weather is really miserable. And um, so we, I'm not really sure what we're doing. I'm just, I, I feel quite happy just to potter at home actually, have a week off and try and get up to date with um you know, some chores and some cleaning and all the boring stuff that I just generally put off um, when I'm working through the week. So, yes, that will be, I think that'll be quite nice, actually. It is miserable. I will try and get out and walk the dog, but um, the children are occupied doing their own things. Um, so, yes, Lulu's got her friends I think, coming over tomorrow evening. So I will try and just give everything a good tidy up today. So probably not much to, to report um, for today. Um, I will try and pop back in the week um, and maybe sit down and have a chat. I haven't really been working on my products too much. I'm really struggling with my knuckles. Um, they're really sore and stiff and swollen. I've had to take my um, engagement ring off. Um, so I'm trying not to overdo it on the crochet front. I did start another little project the other day just because I was missing it. I thought if I gave my hands a rest, it would get better. I think I'm probably going to have to go and speak to the doctors um, because they don't they don't seem to be getting any better. But um, yeah, so I haven't done much crochet. I did finish my knitting project which was the hot water bottle cover so maybe I'll sit down and um, show you that um, but other than that yes very little to to share but if we do anything interesting I will of course pop back and, um, and um, check in anyway <laughs> I'm going to go because I am just waffling now so I will see you shortly
Rob brought back a um, lovely tray of strawberries um, this morning. He just, I think he must have gone to Lidl. Um, they smell so lovely. They smell like summer. Um, so I'm going to do something with those this evening, I think. Look at the lovely tray they came in. I love that. And um, it's Saturday morning, so... We are having a lazy morning. Rob is actually cleaning the guttering, but I thought I would show you this. Um, let me move the camera a minute. It is um, beetroot latte. I thought that um, Lulu and I could give it a go later. It's just um, organic beetroot latte with ginger. Um, and then you just add, you can add either hot or cold milk to it to make either a frappe or um, a latte. So I thought that would be quite fun for Lulu and I to try, um, you know, like a caffeine free drink. Um, and then I've got a couple of books here. Um, this one is Elisa Jewell that um, I've just finished actually. I was so disappointed. I They've obviously re-released re some of her older books. Um, it just, and it just came into the library, but actually when I've looked at it, it's from the year, so it's been reprinted, but it's from the year 2000. And um, I read the back, I'll, I'll let you have a look. It's, it sounded like it was a thriller. I mean, I read it as a thriller, like how low will Nadine stoop in order to make Delilah go away? So I thought, oh, it's one that I've missed. It's not, it's like a noughties, chiclet um and i just i'm not there at all so um you know i might have read something like it in my 20s maybe but so i didn't really enjoy that so that was kind of sad but i did finish it because um i took it home for the easter holidays to read and then i picked this up yesterday the paris apartment which has been on my list of books to read so i think i'll um try and read that this weekend um, I bought some fresh tulips to um, <laughs> to um, replace the Easter ones, um, and then I found this last weekend at the um, carboot sale. It's an old Bovril container, um, and I'm going to try and find some little flowers from outside to pop in it because um, it was only a pound. It really reminded me of when we were younger, we used to go to my, and visit my great nan um, every week in the summer holidays. And um, she always had these Bovril and like Marmite jars that she would wash out. And then we would pick like, cause you know, we had tiny little hands. We would pick like little primroses and things to bring back for her um, from our walks. Um, you know, her and my nan and my mum and me and my brother, they used to drag us on these epic walks around um, box. Um, really beautiful walks, but, you know, at that age, we weren't really that into it. But we used to always pick, well, I did, I, I'm sure my brother wasn't that interested either. Um, we used to pick handfuls of these flowers with short little stalks and um, she would bring them home. We would bring them home and she would put them into little empty bovril um, jugs, um, smaller ones that were smaller than this, um, and put them on the windowsill. And it just reminded me of her. I don't know why. Anyway, for a, for a pound, I thought it was kind of cute. So, um, yeah, I picked that up and brought it home, gave it a wash. So I'm gonna, I'm going to try and find some more little flowers to fit to fit in there. So yeah, that's what's going on this morning. Strawberries. For, <laughs> for pudding this evening. I might just get some cream because they smell like really ready. They've got that lovely um, summery smell. Um, so I might just get some fresh cream and um, we can have those this evening. So yeah, I will pop in, I think we might go for a walk. Um, and I will pop in later. I will, when Lou gets up, she's still in bed, I will um, have a go at making the beetroot lattes and, um, and let you know what they're like. Oh. 
Not that much frost left. Let's go see what happens. does look good on camera. <laughs> they look cute though. Hello, I hope you're all well. Um, as I mentioned over in the podcast, I have been buying a lot of vintage books from the um, Cub Boots House. I've started again. Um, I'm trying not to buy too many, but now that I can see them all put together, I can see that I failed um, miserably actually. So <laughs> I'm just going to go through them. I won't go in depth into them, but um, I'll just nip through if you're interested in um, some of the vintage books I've been collecting. Um, and then I have a pile of library books. So um, I know some people like to to know what people have got out of the library. I know I do. I like to know what people take out from the library. So um, I thought I would share those with you as well. So I will just crack on, I think. So um, the first one is the Anne of Green Gables Christmas Treasury. I couldn't remember if I'd sh shown this in the last um, last podcast. Not sure. Forgive me if I have. Um, I only, I've just bought it because it's Anne of Green Gables and I just love anything Anne of Green Gables. It's really, I mean, it's very dated. It's sort of got lots of little projects in um, you know, lacy paper fans, little Christmas tree decorations. I mean, it's very kind of 70s style in its photography. Um, but there was something about it that I liked and um, I doubt Diana's Christmas skirt with ribbon sash. I, Anne's velvet puff. What else have we got? Anne's braided velvet headband. Diana's Sweetheart Collar. So, um, just really an arts and crafts book, but um, there's some recipes in there, but nothing to Island Whipped Potatoes, Green Gables Bread Sauce, Four Winds Roast Goose with Prunes, um, Anne's Cream of Onion Soup. So I don't know, there was something about it and I just thought that would be nice, you know, I love a Christmas book as well, so um, I thought that was a nice one to add. And I think I paid a pound for it in a, in a charity shop, so I was pleased to have that. Um, this one I think was from the car boot sale. It's Gentlemen Prefer Blondes by Anita Luz. I have never read Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, in fact I wasn't even aware that it was a book, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah. I like reading books that are set in the 20s and that sort of jazz age, so um, I'll definitely read that. And it is kind of like a diary, so I don't think it will take long to get through that at all. So, I could have that. And then I found some of the um, Agatha Christie Fontana books that I do like to collect mainly because of their covers um, and also I love Ag Agatha Christie but I, I don't collect many Agatha Christie books although there is a big pile of, of, of more Christie books there that I'll show you um, but I do like these paperbacks one because um, I think they're, they'll be easy for me to read they're easy to put in a handbag um, the text is fairly small um, but that doesn't bother me too much yet. Um, and these were, I think these were a pound each. So I've got A Murder is Announced. Look at the cover, I just love them. A Pocket Full of Rye, it's a bit disturbing. And Death Comes at the End. Um, and I was lucky, I think I chanced upon them in a charity shop that had quite a few of them. These were the only three that I didn't have, so um, I grabbed those and I, I do hope to read some more because I, I haven't read um, all of the stories by far. And then this one I was really pleased to find. This was just at a um, car boot sale, um, so that's A Stranger Comes to Green No. And um, I love the Green No books, but I've not read them all. I've read the first two, I think, The Children of Green No and 
the chimneys are green now, which I've also really enjoyed. Um, so I'm not sure where this comes in the series, but um, yeah, really pleased to um, have found that. 50p, that was. And then I bought some Georgette Hayers. These were from a charity shop, um, purely because of um, Miranda over um, Miranda Mills channel. She likes the Georgette Hayer. I have never read any. People always recommending them to me, um, but I've not got around to reading them. I bought, I think I bought one um, from a charity shop a while ago, but I've not read it yet. Anyway, I got the Nun Such, which is one I think they read for the Comfort Book Book Club. I think they're like Regency romance kind of books, aren't they? Um, this one says uh, first edition. I don't think, I think a first edition of this, um, oh, first published 1962. Maybe it is. This one was four ninety nine, so a little bit more expensive. It's from one of those um, Oxfam bookshops, um, and I do find the prices in there tend to be a little bit more expensive. But I did, I didn't mind. I, I wanted to read it. Um, and then they had a couple of others. These ones weren't as expensive, um, probably because they're a bit damaged. Uh, Sprig muslin. <laughs> These images. And then this one um, I was drawn to because it looked it looked a little bit like the circus on the front, but I don't think I don't think it is. Oh, although it is set in Bath, so it may, may well be. Um, this one is Lady of Quality. So I will look forward to eventually reading those. Um, I found a lovely edition of Peter Pan and Wendy. Um, and I do like to collect editions of Peter Pan and Wendy. It's one of my favourite children's books. But um, I particularly like this one because it has pictures by Mabel Lucy Atwell. And I just love her illustrations. And they're lovely, aren't they? Um, oh, gosh. I just, I just love her art. It's so beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. So um, I was pleased to have that, definitely. I think that one was about $2.99. Um, and then the others, what time are we on? We're okay. Are, um, some more recent ones, I suppose. I bought a copy of The Screw Tape Letters by C.S. Lewis. I feel like it might have been Sherry from Ollie and Bella who had been reading this. But also my eldest daughter um, recommended that to me as well. So I've got a copy of that to read. And then I've got a Elizabeth Jane Howard book, Falling. Um, I haven't read the, is it the Cazalet Chronicles? I have them, but I've not read them. But this one I read and it just sounded quite interesting. So um, I will give that a go. And that was like 50p. And then this last one, I've already started reading actually, I'm about halfway through, is the Sue Townsend, The Woman Who Went to Bed for a Year. Um, Sue Townsend wrote the um, Adrian Mole Diaries, and I've been working my way through those this year. Um, so I was interested to read some fiction from her. Um, and this one, I thought, um, sounded a lot like um, the Otessa Moshva, is it? Um, my Year of Rest and Relaxation, anyway, the book's called... Um, about a woman that tries to sort of sleep her problems away for a year. So it's very similar. That's a lot darker, I would say, than this. This is obviously um, a bit more light. But it's... Well, when was it written? I, it was written in 2012. And I find some of the language a little bit dated in that um, it was a little bit I'm not sure if it was like homophobia or there was just a few things that were a bit like oh 
the language. And I noticed that when I was reading, um, I read recently a Lisa Jewell book from, I picked it up by accident thinking it was one of her newer ones um, because she does the, um, like the thrillers, doesn't she? And I really, really, I really, really enjoy those. And um, I picked up a book of hers from the library and it was one of her early kind of young people romance books. And the language in it was, I'm just surprised that, I mean, that we would talk like that in the early 2000s. We obviously did, but it was very homophobic, quite um, subtly racist. Um, I guess it shows that we've, you know, how far we, we've come. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent. This, um, this has been okay. Um, I think I prefer the Otessa book, um, but this one is, uh, the Otess is about a young woman dealing with grief, and this one is about a uh, middle-aged woman. Her twins have grown up, and they've just gone off to uni, and it's, I guess she's sort of having a midlife crisis where she's just questioning everything. Um, she finds out her husband's having an affair, um, and she finds out that she, does, she doesn't really even care that much, really. So she just goes to bed. She slowly starts getting rid of all her belongings. Um, so I, it's quite an interesting concept, um, but just be warned about the language. Um, you know, nothing shocking. I mean, we're not. It's just, I guess it's just subtle things that you sort of think, oh, I wouldn't say that. But then, you know, I suppose you have to appreciate that these books are a product of their time. And if you can read it and keep that in mind... Um, so anyway, the last um, books that I have from the um, Kabut Cell, these were such a good find for me. I was so happy. And they are some a set of the um, Agatha Christie, they were like um, reproductions of the Crime Club books. I think they were done in the early 2000s again, 2012. And um, I think what happens is you, you signed up and you've got a book and a magazine about the book um, and I don't know how long they lasted for but I believe there was quite a few books. Um, am I right in thinking like well over 50? So anyway I didn't get 50 but I did one two three four five six seven I got 10. 10 books for £2.50 at the, um, the car boot sale. So I was really pleased because I do have a few of the original ones, but they're so expensive. I really can't afford to, you know, to invest in that sort of um, book. But I just love the covers. So I'll just run through quickly the, the ones that I got. Um, so this one's the, the ABC Murders. We've got um, Death on the Nile. They're not in the best condition. They've been left. They smell a bit like cigarette smoke. Um, and they some of them feel like they've got a bit damp. They're a bit warped. But, um, look at that. That's great, isn't it? I love that. Uh, the Murder of Peter Ackroyd. Again, this one's a bit stained and it's it's definitely got damp. I wonder if they've been stored in an attic or shed or something. Love that. Crooked House. Um, what's this? Murder on the Orient Express. That's lovely as well. Look at that. Um, the Murder at the Vicarage. And then there were none. This one's particularly kind of warped, but I was just so pleased to, um, to find them. I, I mean, especially such a little um, stash. This one's damaged again. The Mysterious Affair at Styles. I don't think I've read this one. Look at that. That looks great, doesn't it? Oh, my legs are going dead. 
Um, this one is Sleeping Murder, Miss Marple's last case. I love the colour on that. And then the last one is A Murder is Announced. For the 50th time, the Queen of Detection defies her readers. Um, I really want to go down and visit her house after seeing um, Sherry's blog. Um, I'll link it below actually if you if you want to have a look. Um, it's, it's Greenway, isn't it? So I'm, I think I'm going to have to get Robert to take me down. It's a little bit of a drive from here, but I would love I would love to visit. Right, so that's it for the books I have been buying. Quite a lot, as you can see. Um, Yes, let's just not talk any more about that. <laughs> um, and I will just quickly go through my library books. So um, I currently have out from the library um, Isabel Elen's Eva Luna. The reason I have this one is because I bought, um, and you may remember seeing it in one of my vlogs, I had bought an Eva Luna book, the second one I think, it was like more stories of Eva Luna. Um, and I'd not read the first one, so I called that one in for the library. We didn't have it at our library, but I just um, reserved a copy. So um, I've started reading that. It's very beautiful. Um, and then what else have I got here? I have got two books of short stories by Alice Munro. Munro. This author is new to me. I'm not very good at reading short stories in that I haven't read many short stories. Um, so I've got these two. I am reading them because I read a book, it was really disturbing actually, I read a book that I bought from a charity shop, I don't know where I've put it now, but it was quite disturbing, it had lots of themes of abuse and anyway it was quite disturbing considering it was written in the 70s and it's um, about the effects that um, child abuse had on a, a woman and her relationships going into adulthood and I remember th like reading it thinking oh it's quite, it's quite shocking like I feel like that would have been quite a shocking story to have read in the 70s in particular um so I was reading up on it and um someone was reviewing it it was Anita Bruckner actually in one of the literary reviews and she was talking about that alongside um, writings by Alice Munro talking about how they um were bringing women's truths to the forefront and I and they were writing characters that weren't always female characters that weren't always lovable and you know I'm really drawn to that type of writing anyway so um I thought I would I would just get some from the library and see if I like them anyway I started with um Runaway and I've I've only read fully read Runaway um for a short story it's actually quite long um I think it's one of the longer ones. I mean, when I say long, it's like 60 pages. But um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed her writing. And nothing much happens in the story. And it's quite funny, actually, because I read a synopsis of the um, story um, after, after I've read it. And it said, I just in like, in like a sentence, it says, a short story about a woman who decides to leave her husband who may or may not have killed her goat <laughs> I just that was the funniest thing um the goat is a very small part of the story it's more about her choosing whether or not this is the life she wants um you know and a, another woman that tries to help her um it yeah, and he obviously um, has a lot of power over her, but it, it's just the way it's written. I don't know. There was just something about it that really struck a chord with me. And like I said, for a book where nothing, a story where nothing much really happens, I I don't know. I really, I was like thinking about it for a couple of days after, like thinking about the meaning of things. Um, I just really enjoyed it. So um, I've just started one of the other stories in this, in this book. So I'm really interested in, interested to read more Alice Munro. I'm really happy to have discovered her. So um, that's why I've got those two out. I don't think I'll get through them. I might just dip in and out of them. I've got I've got them for a couple of weeks and then I'll, I'll send them back. Um, another book is The Stone Diaries by Carol Shields. 
Um, this says winner of the 1995 Pulitzer Prize. Widely regarded as a modern classic, The Stone Diaries is the story of one woman's life, that of Daisy Goodwill Flett, a seemingly ordinary woman born in Canada in 1905. Beautifully written, deeply compassionate, it follows her life through marriage, widowhood, motherhood and old age, as she charts her own path alongside that of an unsettled century. A subtle but effective portrait of an every, every woman reflecting on, un, on an unconventional life. This multi-award winning story deals with everyday issues of existence with an extraordinary vibrancy and irresistible flair. Um, and it has a foreword by Margaret Atwood, um, which I've read. And again, I, I'm just really excited to, to, to read, I don't know. There seems to be a bit of a theme, a sort of female feminist kind of theme going on there. And then lastly, I have um, Letters That Change the World in history um, which is a book of letters from different celebrities or famous people um, that have had an impact I suppose um, from love letters to calls for liberation declarations of war to reflections on death um, so for example there's um, a letter from Henry VIII to Anne Boleyn Frida Kahlo um, and then you've got all, well, just all sorts of Oliver Cromwell, Nelson Mandela. Um, so I just thought that'd be interesting. I've been sort of dipping in and out of that. So that's quite an easy one when you don't really feel like settling down to too much. And then lastly, I have um, Noble Ambitions, The Fall and Rise of Post-War Country House by Adrian Tinniswood. And I love um, books about, I love reading about the country house and how it's changed over the years um, so this one is really interesting to me it's really about how um, these big country houses um, how they continued after the war when that way of lifestyle was just unsustainable and you know the country really didn't want it so a lot of the houses were sort of put to um, like the National Trust or they were handed over to the government for other reasons or they were turned into schools um, yeah, because they were just, um, they couldn't afford to run them or keep them anymore. So it was sort of a way of life that was sort of, um, you know, disintegrating really and how, how they, the owners and the people sort of dealt with that. Um, and a lot of the, how a lot of the houses were um, in a bad state of repair after the war. Um, you know, they've been um, used for various different things. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting actually. So I've actually asked for a copy of that for my birthday because I don't think I'm going to get to read it all in time. Um, I'm about four or five chapters in, but it's quite a big book. Um, and there are lots of pictures in there as well. So and that is everything so um that's all the books i have bought uh, my library books um so i do have another library book out actually but i've nearly finished that so i'll talk about that i think in the podcast um which hopefully i will film in the next week or so so um yeah i think i will leave that now because i don't know how long i've been talking and um i don't want it to be too long so um uh, i will see you soon let me know what you're reading um you've got any recommendations for me as always um, and I will um, I'll see you in the podcast okay bye some loads of wild garlic and I've been meaning to go and pick some for a couple of weeks now um it, it, it was just starting to flower actually so I might be a bit late with it but I thought I'd give it a go because um I really wanted to try some um I saw a recipe for some wild garlic scones um so I thought I would try that. So um, I think I'm going to do that this afternoon and have a go. I've just given the garlic leaves a wash and um, I, 
I don't feel too hard. I think I think I think it will be fine. I'm gonna give it a go. We'll see.